All right, how you doing? Welcome to Behind Sports. My name is Gregory Scott Ryan, and thanks for joining us today. Today's guest is Darren Heitner of Sports Agent Blog, also with uh, Wolf Lawyers down in Miami, Florida. Um, Darren is a double gator living down in Florida right now and is completely entrenched into the uh, sports industry. Uh, welcome, Darren. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Can you go a little bit more into your background and uh, just give it, give us some more information about yourself? Well, as you addressed, and what's probably most important to me, I am a double gator. I was born and bred in the state of Florida, uh, growing up in South Florida in particular, and going to undergrad and then law school at the University of Florida, where in between, between my sophomore and junior years, I had an internship, which was my first foray into the sports industry with a sports and entertainment company in Atlanta. Thereafter, created a website called Sports Agent Blog. Uh, created my own sports agency, which is now defunct, but decided to focus on my legal practice. And as you alluded to, I am a lawyer and partner at Wolf Law Miami. And additionally, I still have a company called Dynasty Dealings, which does some consulting work in the world of sports and entertainment. I teach at Indiana University, where I'm an adjunct professor for a sports agency management class. Great. And I'm also a co-founder of a company called Collegiate Sports Advisors, um, which does some consulting for universities. One thing that I left out is, fortunately, uh, about a year and three months ago, I began writing for Forbes, and I cover the sports business beat there. So quite a few things on my plate, but I yeah. enjoy all of them. That's and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have today. Yeah, well, we'll definitely... As you were talking about uh, being at the University of Florida, what was the what was the first thing that got you, uh, I guess, hooked on, on the sports industry, and what made you uh, go in that direction? Well, going into the at, to the University of Florida, I honestly had no idea that I would end up entrenched in the world of sports, sure. or a particular sports business and sports law. I entered UF with a tr on a major track for political science, which I did complete and minors in mass communications and of all things geography but again it wasn't until after my sophomore year that I had that first experience with a sports entertainment company and the experience was so strong I was thrown right into the mix doing some high profile work and really enjoying every minute of my job in Atlanta that I tried to, to formulate an idea of how I can remain within that particular industry, in particular sports. Got it. And that led to the creation of what was eventually Sports Agent Blog. Okay. Um, one, one interesting thing I, I read about you as well is when you had your agency first early on, you were actually going after and had a couple clients that were uh, bowlers, pro bowlers, is that right? That is true. It seemed like that was a very niche industry at that time, huh? Right, you, you probably can't see it behind me, but there is a uh, a bowling pin from Chris Paul's charity event that okay. I went to in Winston-Salem um, while I was in law school to support one of my clients. Uh, it was it was quite an interesting venture to get involved in the representation of bowlers. There are not many agents out there who care to represent these individuals. However, uh, they are prominently displayed on ESPN quite a few weekends throughout the year. Mm -hmm. They have the opportunity to promote and endorse various brands and quite a few of them are making significant money through those efforts. Unfortunately, again, there's not many people that are either interested or understand the opportunities that are out there and represent these individuals in either procuring opportunities with brands and or negotiating those contracts. So who was I as a law school student, fresh on my feet, trying to make a name for myself in the sports agency world to deny myself the opportunity to represent these individuals? They were fortunately referred to me by other agents who just didn't want to take them on as clients and I said bring them over absolutely no that's great that's that's a that's a very cool way to get into the industry too and and kinda of get your feet wet um, you know doing negotiations so as far as becoming a sports agent and contract negotiations I definitely like to um, go into the process of becoming a sports agent if you can you know whether it's different for you're in Florida is it different for going into different states um, overall, you know, what's, what's kind of the process behind that? Well, the federal government got involved in regulating the sports agency industry a couple ways years ago. One through what is now referred to as SPARTA, but also through what is the Uniform Athlete Agents Act. And the Uniform Athlete Agents Act was basically a, um, 
a representation to the states that this is what the federal government believed that they should do. They should adopt specific sports agency laws state by state, and at this point in time, over 40 states have adopted their own laws. But they want it to be uniform and, and easy for agents to register in the variety of states. Mm -hmm. What we've seen over recent years is that different states are adopting different measures and making it a little bit more difficult and, and, and away from this idea of uniformity. Uh, but that said, if you want to recruit in those states that have these athlete agent acts on the books and you want to recruit specifically student athletes or individuals who retain student athlete eligibility, you need to become licensed. And mm -hmm. There are no states that require the passing of a test. However, the large majority of these states require pretty substantial fees to be paid in order to get and retain your license. Okay. Um, so, so it is a little bit, uh, it precludes some agents from getting involved uh, in this particular industry. And the state and the state registration is separate from what some of the players associations require with regards to registration right. as well. Okay, so as far as the different going into different leagues or different organizations too, do they have um, do they have some kind of a test or, or level of education that you have to have? Yes, well, there are minimum basic requirements, and it and it varies uh, players' association to players' association. Sure, the sure. most stringent regulations are those promulgated by the NFL Players Association, and it's the only union that requires agents to pass a test in order to become certified. Additionally, you have to have a certain uh, you have to have clients on NFL rosters within a certain amount of time, or you may lose your registration. Got it, got it. You have to pay a pretty hefty fee. You have to have um, professional malpractice insurance, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you do have to have a certain amount of education. You actually have to have a postgraduate degree, or the exception is that you have the sufficient amount of negotiating experience, which was recently changed from six years of experience to seven years. Uh, but the other players associations also require the payment of fees and also have minimum education requirements. However, they do not require an individual to pass a particular test in order to become certified. That's interesting. Uh, the NFL obviously is, is a little bit tougher to get into. Um, do you see other sports bodies adapting these, um, these qualifications as well and, and, uh, and making you know, tests uh, a standard way of getting your license? My easy answer to that is no, and that's yeah. because I actually just haven't heard of any players' associations even considering uh, <laughs> following the NFLPA's model. Uh, that said, I think that one main reason why the NFLPA believes that it can institute this pretty high burden is because there is just an overwhelming amount of interest amongst sure, sure. agents, amongst individuals to become certified with that particular players' association. Um, and I don't see the requirement of passing a test in any way inhibiting the amount of applications that they receive year to year. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So as far as your mindset for your first negotiation, can you kind of take us back through, uh, you know, how you, how you uh, approach that and, 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 you know, how you dealt with the first one? A lot differently than I would today. Sure. And, and I think a big portion of that is because at the time I was still in law school and I hadn't had any negotiation experience other than what I had learned through reading various books and also through just the practical experience I had through a negotiations and mediations course in law school. So handling that first negotiation between one of my bowling clients and a potential sponsor was quite different than how I would handle it today. However, one thing's the same, which is that there's an immense amount of, of preparation sure. that must go into that particular negotiation. You need to know who's on the other side what type of strategy they typically employ, who's got the leverage and why they have the leverage, what particular things are they looking for out of your client and what are, what's of importance to your own client. And those are only the, the, that's the start of the preparation that go, that's involved in these types of negotiations. But preparation is key uh, no matter if you are the most novice or most experienced negotiator. Sure. You have to understand what your side prioritizes and also what the other side is looking for. Interesting. Well, I think it's appropriate with the recent release of Jay-Z's new album to kind of talk about Jay-Z and the sports industry and how he's he's been in the news over the past few months uh, with Rock Nation Sports. Um, and it's a very interesting relationship that he has uh, with the industry and he's 
he's he's a very obviously he's a um, a noteworthy person, and people can flock to him, but just because of his overall mass appeal, I'd really like to get your insight and and your opinion on on how he's going to uh, um, maybe change things in the industry, or if you see any other copycat situations similar to what he's doing, and kind of how it affects uh, people in their uh, you know approach to get athletes. Well, first, let's talk about change. Uh, the industry has been changed already in the brief amount of time since he made his announcement with his agency, Rock Nation Sports, that he was going to begin to represent players. Sure. Not only for marketing endeavors, which he began right away, but now as he's become certified in various players associations and eventually wishes to become certified by the NFL Players Association, we see that it's not merely a partnership that was created between his agency and Creative Artists Agency, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, sports agency in the world, but now he's eventually going to just go off on his own and try to make a change in the world of sports representation. Sure. He's already been able to um, sign up Robinson Cano, uh, do marketing for Victor Cruz, Skylar Diggins of the WNBA, right. et cetera, et cetera. And obviously Geno Smith was a was big news when he left his agent right after the NFL draft right. to sign with Rock Nation Sports. So certainly that changes the, the, the scope of the world of sports agency and makes, uh, makes it a, a lot more competitive for the existing agents that are recruiting high-profile athletes. But will there be, moving on to your second question, will there be copycats? And whereas earlier when you asked the question, will other players associations copy the NFLPA? Sure. And I had answered, no, I haven't heard of anything. Yes, I have heard on this front that there are other people, especially in the world of entertainment and specifically music, mm -hmm. that have begun to look into whether they want to invest their own money and their time into either an existing sports agency or create their a new one from scratch. So it has led to other individuals, prominent individuals that have major followings and a lot of money to wonder whether they want to follow in Jay-Z's footsteps. Yeah. And it almost makes, I mean, it makes so much sense just because of the marketability of these guys already and the, the audience that they have. Um, I mean, they're, they're jumping into to a market, you know, that they have fans already ready to go. Um, it makes absolute sense for them to, to tie on to you know sports. Sports and entertainment have always gone hand in hand. So it's interesting to see if uh, anybody else does that. Um, I want to shift gears just a little bit. Uh, I read a recent post on your website about um, Louisville actually sending out documents to sports agents, uh, basically saying, hey, don't talk to our players. Don't, don't talk to our players. And if you do want to talk to our players, register through us. And right. then we will uh, get you in touch with these players. One, I'd like you, for you to talk about that first. And to me, it doesn't seem like Louisville really has a leg to stand on too much and how much they can really. I mean, I know in the document it said uh, limiting it to social media, text messages, all these things. So the actual policing of these uh, to me seems a little bit um, a little bit absurd, but definitely like to get your thoughts on that. Well, apparently the basis for this action by the Department of Athletics at Louisville and also the statement made by football coach Charlie Strong mm -hmm. was the fact that Teddy Bridgewater, the high profile quarterback at Louisville, his mother was inundated by agents and runners contacting her nonstop to try to get um, some sort of edge in the early recruitment of her son. Right. And she mentioned this to Coach Strong, she mentioned this to the Department of Athletics, and in response, both Strong and the department decided to send out what was the letter and also to make the statement. Um, now, going to the second question, which is enforceability. You know, this particular statement and the letter basically is simply a request sure. to agents that they immediately cease communications with student athletes at Louisville. Yet it was phrased in a way that it was a demand. Right. There is absolutely no way for the university to enforce what is supposed to be this type of restriction unless, of course, the state amends its own statutes to make such communication illegal, sure. which it is not. So it presents a major issue in enforceability for the university. Now, why could it be effective? It could be effective two ways. 
One, for the agents who will abide by such rules, even though they are under absolutely no threat if they decide otherwise. But the second way that it could be effective is if the athletes at the university receive this same sort of communication and take it upon themselves to restrict communications to agents because they don't want to jeopardize their standing with the university, with the team, with their coach. Um, so it may have some sort of effect. There may be some ramifications. Uh, but at the end of the day, what I think it does most is it empowers those agents who run afoul of the rules and run afoul of the laws anyway. So it could have unfortunate ramifications, unfortunate results mm -hmm. um, from what on the surface could be deemed as a policy that's worthwhile. It really doesn't help out the student athletes in any way. It only inhibits them from beginning the vetting process, which is very important for their professional careers. Right. Now, do you see other schools adopting a similar policy? They have. Yeah. And um, for instance, a few universities that have adopted similar policies are the University of Miami, mm -hmm. the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, and the University of Washington. You know, obviously, when you think about the first two that I mentioned, these are universities that have been scrutinized sure. uh, for certain practices that have occurred at the universities, and they've been under investigation by the NCAA. So their policies could be a reaction to those particular investigations. Similarly here, I think that you know the statement and the letter are simply uh, their reactions to uh, this concern by a high-level prospect's mother who was peeved by the number of requests that she was receiving. Yeah. And remember, Louisville hasn't had the recent success in football that a university of North Carolina, let's say, has had. So the fact that it has a major prospect on its campus in Teddy Bridgewater, it probably wants to do whatever's necessary to appease both the player and his parents. Yeah. Well, I guess it makes sense on a university to, uh, on their side, to try, you know, to try to, to say something um, to, to the agents um, and try to take, get as much control as they possibly can, I guess. Uh, we'll see how that works out. Um, Darren, I have a couple questions for you uh, that we ask all the guests on Behind Sports. Uh, so if you can uh, just take a moment. The, uh, the first one is you've been in the industry with the blog, uh, with the website since 2005 uh, in law school, and you've obviously had your ear to the ground uh, for quite a long time. Definitely like to hear about, you know, one of the more outlandish or unique experiences you've had in your career. Well, I'll never forget this one time when I was an agent and I was recruiting baseball players and I was certified in the state of Florida I had gone to what was a perfect game showcase in Fort Myers on the west coast of Florida and I was there with one of my interns and we were scouting different players and talking to their families and I was talking to this one baseball players father and we were having a really good conversation I was explaining some of the services that we provide and how we could help his son through the draft as his advisor and out of nowhere comes a rival agent and he's there with his father and he steps up to the player's father and myself and my intern looks the father in the face and says or and asks are you having a good conversation to which the father replies yes sure. and and says straight to the father well it doesn't matter because even if you sign with him I'm going to steal your son as a client at some point in the future Wow! and I just I couldn't do anything but laugh at that point and it was a microcosm of you know my experiences in the world of sports agency that kind of turned me off to the whole industry however I do enjoy covering it I do enjoy working on behalf of agents as their attorneys but it quickly made me realize this was not the industry for me Wow, that's crazy and I'm sure that's uh, that's not the first or the last time that's a, that's occurred too <clears throat> um, so a lot of a lot of people who are gonna be watching this are, are well, one sports agent might be their dream job. It might be, you know, getting into the sports industry is is what they're what they're going to school for. It's something that they aspire to be in. Can you give some in, uh, insight or advice to someone who is trying to break into the sports industry? Sure. Uh, be bold, be unique, and do something extraordinary. I think one issue that a lot of people have is that they believe that they can rest on their credentials, on their laurels, on where they went to undergrad, where they went to law school. Um, but truthfully, 
what matters most is one the relationships that you're able to procure so if you can get in early speaking to people that are in the business I think that will do wonders, especially if they can recognize you by name or by face, et cetera. Sure. But two, as I said, be bold, be unique, do something extraordinary. I think one thing that really benefited me in, in my career was starting Sports Agent Blog, right. something that I started from scratch that did not exist prior to signing up for www.sportsagentblog.com. Right. And it really allowed me to separate myself from others. And I know even to the point of being a lawyer, it's really helped me with regards to establishing my brand and marketing myself to clients and, and being able to sometimes promote my clients through not only Sports Agent Blog, but through my social media gatherings, etc. So certainly do something that is unique because that will always catch the eye of a potential employer. Great advice. Darren... And I really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to speak with us. Um, wish you uh, good luck in all your endeavors, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. All right. My name is Gregory Scott Reinen. This is Behind Sports. Thanks for coming by.